How to Defeat Putin I know how to stop Vladimir Putin once and for all. I here offer my strategic wizardry to the Western Empire free of charge. Before I reveal my unstoppable plan, we must first understand that the Associated Press has just informed us that it is a baseless conspiracy theory that the U.S. is responsible for sabotaging the Nord Stream pipelines, which were set up to carry Russian gas to Germany, and that this baseless conspiracy theory is being promoted solely by Russia and far-right conspiracy groups. The Kremlin and Russian state media are aggressively pushing a baseless conspiracy theory blaming the United States for damage to natural gas pipelines in the Baltic Sea in what analysts said Friday is another effort to split the U.S. and its European allies, AP tells us. The Russian position is also reverberating on social media forums popular with American conservatives and far-right groups. The suggestion that the U.S. caused the damage was circulating on online forums popular with American conservatives and followers of QAnon, a conspiracy theory movement which asserts that Trump is fighting a battle against a satanic child trafficking sect that controls world events, AP reports. This information may come as a surprise to the many people who are unaware that promoting this claim means they are necessarily either Russian or far-right QAnon satanic pedophile conspiracy theorists, like, for example, Poland's former foreign minister and current sitting member of European Parliament, Radek Sikorsky, who openly thanked the United States for exploding the pipelines. The news that this conspiracy theory is baseless may also come as a surprise to those who've noted that both President Biden and his Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs, Victoria Nuland, explicitly said that Nord Stream 2 would be brought to an end if Russia invades Ukraine, that the U.S. sanctioned those who built Nord Stream 2, that D.C. insiders are on record saying that they want Europeans to be more dependent on North American energy than on pipelines from Russia, that Germans had just been angrily demanding an end to U.S.-led sanctions on Russia and a reopening of Nord Stream gas, that U.S. naval forces were recently conducting unmanned underwater vehicle drills right where the pipelines were attacked, that unmanned underwater vehicles have been found carrying explosive charges near Russian pipelines in the past, that Poland literally just inaugurated a gas pipeline that will transport gas from Norway through Denmark and the Baltic Sea, that U.S. military helicopters were recorded traveling between the two blast points and along the Nord Stream 2 pipeline shortly before the explosions, that the U.S. empire has an explicitly stated policy of ensuring that no powers develop that could challenge its global hegemony, including in Europe, and that the CIA has a known history of blowing up Russian gas pipelines. But it's in the news, so it's definitely true. They're not allowed to lie. The U.S. is not guilty. So if it's a crazy Russian, Satan, pedophile, QAnon, crackpot conspiracy theory to believe the U.S. government or its imperial proxies may have had something to do with the sabotage of Russian pipelines, who did it? Well, this is going to blow your mind because of how wildly counterintuitive it is. But here's the answer. Russia. This is according to such ever-impartial and totally trustworthy experts as former CIA director John Brennan who says that Russia certainly is the most likely suspect, and NATO think tanker Alexander Vershbow, who says Putin blew up his own pipelines instead of simply closing a valve because he wanted to show the world that he is a madman. The sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines further reinforces the image of Putin as a madman, which might persuade some allies to push for a ceasefire in negotiations that would inevitably mean Ukraine giving up significant amounts of territory, Vershbow told the Atlantic's Susan B. Glaser. So there you have it. Russia, not the U.S. empire, is responsible for destroying billions of dollars of its own economic and energy infrastructure and releasing hundreds of millions of dollars of its own gas and ending its crucial point of leverage over Europe in direct facilitation of U.S. geostrategic interests and in direct subversion of its own, because Putin is a crazy lunatic. If it wasn't true, they couldn't report it in the news. So are you ready for my brilliant strategy on how to defeat Putin? Here it is. Simply stand back and wait for him to explode the rest of Russia.
This is, after all, the same madman who the New York Times informs us has been ordering his troops to shell a nuclear power plant they already control. If Putin is a gibbering, irrational lunatic who always enjoys blowing up his own stuff for no reason other than to act crazy, surely if we just stand back and leave him to his own devices, he will soon turn the Russian Federation into a steaming pile of rubble. Honestly, I can't believe it's taken me, a humble blogger, to figure this out on behalf of the U.S. Empire. You'd think, with all the brilliant minds in the U.S. government and the mainstream news media, they'd have figured this one out by themselves. But apparently they need a little help sometimes. Any D.C. think tanks are welcome to call me for any lucrative employment offers they care to extend. You are welcome in advance. Here's looking forward to Putin's self-inflicted downfall.